welcome everyone to Love Talk Podcast with me, Kelly. I will be your host for tonight's podcast reading. Um, I asked recently for you guys to send me emails um, concerning your love situations. And I've received quite a quite a few. And I just want to say, first of all, thank you so much for participating. Um, if you do have a love situation or a struggle that you would like some help with, feel free to send me an email. The link will be below the email address. And um, tell me about your situation, what you want help with, and I will do my very best to give you a shout out here in one of my Wednesday Love Talk podcasts. And if you would like me to uh, help you with that situation, um, we'll do it here live. Okay. And you could also get some feedback from others as well. Okay. So I received an email and um, with his permission, um, I'm going to tell you about the situation. Um, it's a twin flame. He calls it a twin flame saga from hell. <laughs> Okay, so let me read the information. The email, his name is Charlie, um, and he did give me permission to tell his story. Okay, so I'm going to read it to you. Hi, Kelly. What a great idea to get viewer questions like this. I have been a wreck since I met my twin flame right before the Christmas before last. I met her about a week before that Christmas, and right after meeting her online, I had two kundalini activations, and my kundalini rose early Christmas morning. I was not spiritual before starting the twin flame journey with a false twin before I had met my true twin. I met the false twin a few years before the true twin and met my true twin flame literally less than a week after I emotionally detached from my false twin flame, which people say is common that you meet them right after your false twin flame. The thing is that I'm a 49 year old male Virgo and she is a 29 year old Pisces. Plus, she looks and acts even younger than her age in a lot of ways. She seems more like she is in high school than a 29-year-old woman. I know she wants things I could never give her. She is one of the most beautiful, sexy women in the world, and we met because she is a tarot reader online. She blew up on social media right after we met and went from zero followers on one platform to almost 100,000 followers in one year. Right after we met online and I had my kundalini awakening, I told her what I was going through and she pulled away. We are still acquaintances online, but rarely talk now. I wonder if she is really my twin or some other kind of cosmic connection, or if I'm just imagining everything. I have seen constant tower readings that seem to pick up on our energy that say she is from you and other readers, but you never really know. Also, she seems to want things I can never give her. She could get the hottest guys in the world and celebs or rich guys and she seems to want that I can't even or ever imagine her being happy with me but I feel so different I have never really connected with women my whole life other than her should I try to move on or should I wait your last reading was your last reading as well as many others feel like you were picking up on our energy she seems to have uh, very narcissistic traits, but she had a lot of trauma when she was young. She's so beautiful and sexy. Guys go crazy for her. She has so many options. It's unbelievable. She is hotter than Megan Fox and looks just like her. Okay. Um, so he goes on to state what her name is, um, but we're not going to say that. And um, he says, thanks so much. Hope this wasn't too much info. Um, he does say... <clears throat> I wonder if twin flames and separation is a thing. Um, and also he says, we seem to be on cordial terms though, but I haven't even brought up twin flames since we first met Charlie. Okay. Oh boy. <sighs> to unpack this. So, um, here's the thing you guys, um, Two, uh, Charlie, two things stick out to me here. And I don't know if you guys are, can pick up on this, but uh, meeting her online and your extreme focus on her aesthetics, um, sexy, beautiful, can have the hottest guys. I don't think I'm good enough for her or uh, I just feel different. I don't know if I can give her what she wants. Um you know, 
and then um, you're labeling this twin flame and separation. This is not a twin flame thing. I mean, I, you know, like I got to keep it real here. This is not a twin flame thing. Okay. I think a lot of you, maybe you like to call it a twin flame because it feels so intense and it feels so passionate. Energy is so strong. Can't leave each other alone. That kind of thing. Uh, this is where I, uh, this is where I tend to think that um, things get convoluted. Um, twin flame relationships are not generally considered to be um, quote unquote obsessive in some way. Okay. Twin flame relationships are peaceful and they're relaxed and they're in real life. Okay. So here's the thing, Charlie, what you have is what I call a crush and keep it very simple here. This is a crush and a crush and a twin flame are not the same. They may feel the same. They may look the same, but they're, they're not the same. Okay. Um, now I, I don't see in your email here, anything that says that you've actually met in real life. So I'm going to go under the presumption that you haven't. Um, I feel, um, especially the thing is, so there's a couple of things that are uh, more that I need to unpack here. Um, the Kundalini activation, um, you know, Kundalini activations are basically what we call trapped energy. We feel this intensity within ourselves for another person, but we can't get it out. Right. Uh, at least that's a, a partial understanding. I'm sure there's a lot more to that. Um, but the thing is, um, I don't know about, I don't know that you meet your twin flame right after your false twin flame leaves. I mean, I suppose that could be possible. I don't, I don't know. Um, I've never seen evidence of that to say either way. So I can't really comment on that. Um, but oh my gosh, I feel like. It's really like you, you've, you've, she's a tarot reader online. Um, she had zero followers when you met her and then she blew up to a hundred thousand. So she sounds like she's very successful in what she's doing, which is wonderful. Um, she blew up on social media right after we met. Okay. So almost like immediately. Um, so she seems like she has a level of popularity, which can, um, she's raised her, her status has risen due to her followers and um, recognition. So she's obviously in the public eye and then she's kind of in, I guess you could call it a celebrity status in some way. Okay. That may, small way, but definitely there. Um, I feel like, I, I feel like it's a crush. I feel like you have a preoccupation with her. Um, and I'm not saying this, I'm evaluating, I'm observing as a true Virgo. I'm not saying this to criticize you, but, um, so I hope you don't take it that way, but, um, you, I can't, you say, I can't ever imagine her being happy with me. Okay. I have never really connected with women my whole life other than her. Well, that's the problem. <laughs> um, if you've never really connected with other women, um, but you're what, why are you connecting so strongly with her? I feel like you've, you've got somebody here that you have a preoccupation with, um, her aesthetic, her status. Um, this is not twin flame, twin flame relationships, first of all, are quite rare. Okay. Um, and they also occur in real life. They, they're they not online uh, types of things. What you have is what we just basically call um, a crush. Okay. And the crush kind of thing uh, gives you those butterflies that you get in your stomach. They give you jolts of electricity you may feel. Um, it can be quite overwhelming. Um you feel crazy emotions for someone. You could feel maybe like sometimes you could feel shy and then uncontrollably giddy at the same time. A lot of nervous energy. You can't think straight. You can't, you can't, you can't, get, you can't get yourself together. Okay. Um, a crush is a burn, uh, basically like a burning desire to be with someone who you find a very attractive and extremely special, 
but that you are not actually in a relationship with. Okay. And we're talking a real relationship with someone like in the, like in the physical world here. Okay. I feel like it's a, a, a little more of a fantasy, you know, um, There's a tendency to, you know, obviously there's admiration here for her. Um, there's a tendency, though, to have a person that you have a crush on on such a high pedestal that that's probably why you feel like you couldn't get, there isn't anything that she would could possibly want from you or that you could offer to her, you know. Um, I feel like and you're asking in this question here is should i wait or try to move on i i don't feel like you should wait and i don't necessarily agree that you need to move on i think you need to move forward and if you really are feeling some type of way about her i think that you need to find a way to connect with her in the physical world where that would look like um reaching out to her asking if she would like to meet for coffee or drinks you get to know her in a in, a, in real world time, sitting in front of her, okay, um, because you need to come, you need to get her off of that pedestal, that crush type of energy um, is going to, that can create toxicity in a relationship, okay, um, because you will always, as long as you have her up on a pedestal in, in this particular way or preoccupied with all the aesthetics, you'll never feel like you can connect with her in a deep soul bond level in a neutral place between the two of you in a safe place because you, um, you, you'll always feel like I don't have anything to offer or I don't feel like I would be good enough for her. I don't think I have what she needs or she, you know, I, I feel like you've got her in this position where she could have all these celebrities and rich guys and hot guys, and I'm not one of them. And and you don't know how she feels about that. You don't know how she feels about you um, because you are blocking yourself from her, believe it or not, because of your crush, because of your obsession. is This, this preoccupation is the word I want to use instead. The preoccupation is keeping you from being open and vulnerable with her. And she's sensing it. And she's not going to engage with that because you are not seeing her in a real light. So here's the thing, you know, um, if you've got her like so hot, you, you know, everybody has imperfections. Okay. So imagine if you were a woman and somebody was looking uh, longingly at you and seeing all these amazing, wonderful things about you. I'm not talking about the character traits. I'm talking about the aesthetic. Um, and then you meet that woman and you see she's got scars on her face or she's, you know, whatever she feels is a flaw or you feel is a flaw. And she she comes forward and then all of a sudden now she's popping, she's pricking holes in that, that the bubble, the fantasy that you have. And all of a sudden you see that there's something, there's a flaw. You might say, oh my gosh, that's, that's not what I thought you were. That's not who you seem to be online or... Or that kind of thing and you know that's why we have to have real relationships with people we have to see flaws we have to see authenticity um, when somebody has another person on a pedestal and then they want to connect with them um, that other person can feel very uncomfortable now because now they may feel like they have to live up to some type of ideal that you've got going on in your mind you know that's very difficult for women because women change so much throughout the years, um, their bodies change, everything changes so much, so drastically for women. And there's a lot of competition out there. I don't feel like a woman wants to ever be put on some type of pedestal by a man, not for her looks so much as for who she is as a woman, all of her um, amazing traits, uh, who she what she brings to the table, you know, because the soul is what's more important and i'm not saying you don't feel those ways or there's things about her but based on the email that you sent me um you, you say she seems to have very narcissistic traits but she had a lot of trauma when young well you know you say she seems to have a very narcissistic traits but she had a lot of trauma when young she's so beautiful and sexy guys go crazy for her she has so many options it's unbelievable she's hotter than megan fox 
and looks like her. I mean, you're very focused on the aesthetic here. All the physical as uh, attributes of her. Um, what you need to do is um, stop focusing on that and um, try to get to know her for who she is as a person. You want to appeal to her heart, her soul, her nature. Um, you know, you're 49. She's 29. Uh, I mean, listen, there's plenty of plenty of women who are older that look younger and there's plenty of, you know, younger women who look older. I mean, I, I understand um, as as men have that aesthetic attraction and everything. Um, women don't generally have that. Um, women do tend to look at males bodies. It's like, eh. Women tend to be more along the lines, okay, but who are you? How do you treat me? You know, and how do you treat other people? And do you have a good heart? Are you sincere? Are you, um, can you connect? Women are more emotional, you know, we, we connect that way. Um, so I do understand what's going on here with you, but um, I, I have a concern that you just, you have a crush on a celebrity, so to speak, you know, um, who maybe at one time was not in some type of public eye, but now is, and she's grown and good for her. She's, she's accomplishing what she's accomplishing, but you know, I feel like at the end of the day here, you know, if, if you really are feeling strongly about her in some type of way, and you really feel like this is a person that you really want to get to know and get past the aesthetic and things like that, um, I feel like you need to make a cordial, casual invitation to her to see if she's even willing to meet. Otherwise, if she's not, or if you don't, she will just remain um, on that pedestal. And, it, and as you say, try to move on. That would be very difficult for you. It's, you know, uh, a crush is a crush for a reason. Um, crushes kind they hurt because we've got somebody who we just can't you know stop thinking about her that we're just so crazy about her we have it a crush is an ideal a crush is is very immature love it's 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 a bit childish um, there's a there's it's activating a childish spot within us deep love is is mature and secure and it's it's created between two people Love is not found, love is created. So there was a story that somebody told me years ago. Um, people think that when they get into a relationship or they get engaged, they get married, they're given a box, like a, a gift wrapped box that they open and it's got everything in it to make the marriage wonderful, to make the relationship wonderful like a pre-packaged kind of deal. That's not how it works. When two people come into a union together, the box is empty that they must fill with gifts and create and build that love and that relationship, okay? And I feel like there's so much disappointment in the world because everybody's looking for that jackpot win in love. You know, we're looking for the perfect person. We're looking for somebody who is just perfect you know and just knows how to be knows how to communicate no 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 you know we attract what we are if you want a safe healthy relationship you must become safe and healthy yourself okay and i feel like you have something here it's not a twin flame i feel like it's a spark okay um but i feel like you have to take this journey to discover it's a discovery it's like a lawyer um, when he's going to take on a client he has to build a case a lawyer has to go and uh, get into discovery mode he needs to find out all he can about his client about the situation about and build a case to see if this is something that can be won this this person's heart or this relationship if it can be if there's a, um, a way for this to you know, come before a judge and get married, <laughs> you know, um, 
I feel like there's a potential here for something to occur for you, but she has to be a willing participant. And um, I don't feel like approaching her with this tremendous amount of how she so all her aesthetics and all um most likely and i can tell you this from experience if she's in a position where she has a lot of followers and there's a lot of people she's going to have men chasing after her and um you know there's some women that are into that i as a tarot reader i have plenty of followers my other channel's got 100k i get plenty of messages from men i find that um it's a bit overwhelming and I feel like um, if if she is looking, uh, you have to go into discovery. You need to find out, is she with someone? Is she married? Is she single? Um, what kind of connection do you have? Do you sense that she would be interested in having coffee? Have you asked her? Are you close proximity to each other? If you're only on online with each other, then, um, you know, is there a distance? If there's a, there's a huge gap in distance, geographical distance, that's a huge obstacle to overcome. Not many people are willing to overcome those obstacles. Not many people are capable or motivated to try to do that. So you need to find out, uh, are you, are you able to meet up with her? You know, um, there are so many variables. And I feel that this is more of a preoccupation. Uh, let me tell you. You guys, I had someone reach out to me for a reading one time, uh, a few years back, and she had a situation where she was crazy head over heels for a guy, and she went on to, into a long diatribe about their relationship and, you know, the struggles that they had, and... Uh, she just wanted to know basically how things were going to turn out, what she should do about it, what have you. So I had to go into discovery mode myself and ask her some questions. And I said, well, how long have you known him? And I think it was like four or five years. I said, what's the nature of your relationship? And she said, well, we've never met. And I, I said, what do you mean? And she said, well, he's a K-pop star and he travels all over the world. And I have... Um, I've been to all his shows and sometimes he looks at me, I could tell, like I, I caught him looking at me a couple of times when he's on stage. Um, and he's just, I know he's my twin flame. I know he is. We're so perfect for each other. And I said, so does he know who you are? She says, he doesn't know. I, I don't think he knows that I exist. <laughs> um, or, you know, we've talked a couple of times. He's responded to me on Instagram where he has like 4.5 million followers, you know, um, you guys, please, I know not all of you are in these types of situations, but please, please, please take it from me. You're calling, some of you are calling these relationships or these things, these phenomena, twin flame relationships. They are not twin flame relationships. These are preoccupation ships. These are obsession ships. These are fanboy, fangirl ships. These are not real things. Um, they're crushes. Do you remember when you were in school? You had a crush um, on the girl in school or the boy in school, or you had a crush on a celebrity um, or a singer or, or, you know, that kind of thing. Um, these can be very dangerous. These can make you do wild and crazy things. These can be very, very dangerous, and they can be very harmful to your to your soul. Just the fact that Charlie is saying that he doesn't believe that he has anything she could want. Charlie, that's not true. That's not true. But you can't make that determination because you haven't have you met her in person have you sat down her on a person sat down with her on a personal level and had a conversation and have you gotten past the crush or the preoccupation and gotten to know her has that opportunity occurred if it hasn't occurred or if it doesn't occur then this is you're going to be stuck five years Crushes don't generally last for five years. Twin flame relationships are forever. 
Crushes don't generally last longer than five years, unless they're online. If they're online, it could last for a very, very long time. But in general, in real life, they don't generally last that long. Now, real love in real love, real life, that will last. Real true love that's being created and built between people, that will last a lifetime. I always, I always have, um, I've, I've heard people and I always think to myself, this isn't, this is not a truth. Um, someone who will say, well, um, I don't love that person anymore. And my response to that is, well, if that's the case, you never truly really love them because love never dies. True love. You can't unlove someone. If someone ever says, I don't love you anymore, um, I don't think that they understand really what they're saying. Um, we don't just stop loving people. We may stop liking people. <laughs> we may not like somebody's behaviors. Um, or we may have a crush on someone and that crush wears off. That's not love. Crush is not love. True love. True, true love. Love is a verb. To love is to create love between two people. Um, romantic feelings for someone or crush feelings. Romantic feelings are just sweet. You know, crush feelings are very intense and electrifying, you know. Um, so I have to say at this point right here with this letter, Charlie, um, I feel like even like when you say here, she seems to, you say that a little bit here in your letter, she seems to, which tells me that you're making assumptions on what she may want. She, so she seems to want things I can never give her. She seems to have very narcissistic traits, you know, um, these seeming things are very, uh, they're assumptions. You have to get to know her on a personal level on an intimate personal level in real life face to face because when you are not one-on-one -on -one with someone there's a lot of pieces to the puzzle that will be missing being one-on-one -on -one with someone gives the opportunity for love to grow right um when you're not one-on-one -on -one and you're just seeing them on the big screen you're seeing a representation of that person you're only seeing a small piece of who they are when they shut that camera off what's their day like how are they with their family and their friends are they out I mean you uh, and, and many of you of course might see your person you know as being this just you know they're they're it's a celluloid it's celluloid it's like an like an avatar but you know do you try to imagine that when they are done on the video, they go out and walk their dog and they're out there picking poop up off the grass because, you know, that's what you got to do with their dog. Like, can you imagine this person in real life human situations, not just in this one um, track that they are presenting themselves? You know, you have to have all the pieces of the puzzle. You, you have to know where that person lives. You have to see what their environment is like, meet their family, their friends. You have to be involved in their life to even be able to create some kind of a relationship, you know, um, because there's a lot, there's a lot missing and it takes time to get to know somebody, you know, so it's a preoccupation. It's, 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 it feels to me mostly like quote unquote, a celebrity crush and it will, it will go away. You may not have to try to move on. Um, it, eventually it'll probably wear off, you know, um, but if it's just online, it's going to take a lot longer and you do yourself a favor that if there's no way for you to connect on a personal one-on-one -on -one intimate level in the physical world, then um, I would try to intentionally disconnect from that so that you can fast track that crush and those feelings to disappear because they're just going to leave you stuck. If you are able to meet with her and get to know her on a personal level, um, away from who she is on the screen there and, you know, whatever she presents or however she presents herself to you, you're able to do that. And then you can um, then start the discovery phase of getting to know her and finding out if this is someone that you truly do see yourself being with away from the aesthetic, 
away from how beautiful and sexy she is, away from the competition that you feel she could have anybody. Um, those things and get to know soul to soul, then um, I feel like then there's, a, then there's a chance and then there's a shot. But I have to say, you guys, there's a lot of people I'm noticing as, you know, I'm 53 years old. I lived during the time, as most of you, um, where before we had social media or the Internet. The, most, the closest anybody ever got to a celebrity was maybe um, fan mail <laughs> or MTV or, you know, tabloids or things like that. Now you can connect with celebrities left, right. It's very easy. They're all active on social media and things like that. Um, they're not as celluloid as they were, but I know for a fact that until you actually are able to sit down with that person on an intimate personal level, you, you can just get stuck on thinking somebody is something that they're not. You have to, you want to be able to see who they are in their everyday life. That changes everything. And if you fall in love with that, that person who's away from that screen, if you, if those feelings are still there in them in their mess or them in their everyday with their flaws, and all that stuff and those feelings actually grow stronger when you see their imperfections that's when you start that twin flame journey and the twin flame journey is just unconditional love and growth i have a book called um 11 signs you're in a twin flame relationship it is an ebook and uh oh I have a link to it here, but if you, uh, there's a, there will be a link to get my ebook underneath this video. All you have to do is click that link and it'll take you to my website where you can purchase the book. Once you purchase it, I, it will then automatically be sent to you through your email where you'll be able to download the book. Okay. 11 signs that you're in a twin flame relationship. And I feel like, um, right now, this might be, it's possible it could be more of a twin spark. There's a spark. Definitely is what you're feeling. Um, but at this point, it's preoccupation level. And you will have to get yourself out of preoccupation level to try to move it forward, to connect and, and discover more about her, to see if there's something here. Or if that's not possible, you got to disconnect. Right? Or just let the the crush energy subside. Um, do understand, you guys, that there is a difference between twin flame and crush. Okay, even though they feel the same, it has the same type of feelings. Um, try to be able to discern a feeling that you have with someone. Is it a crush or is it a twin flame? So get that ebook. You'll understand a bit more about what a twin flame connection is i should probably write an ebook on the crush syndrome because it is a syndrome which means it, it lasts for a little while it's more more like a cute crush syndrome is what i want to call it um so there you go charlie thank you for sending your email in to me i hope that this was explicit and eye-opening and helpful in some way um, I, I, I always try to bring clarity and truth. I don't, uh, uh, from how I see it, I don't like to blow smoke and, uh, I try not to be offensive. Um, uh, I try to be a bit more assertive in my speaking with whomever I'm speaking to without um, hurting anyone's feelings. And, you know, so understand that if there was anything that I pinpointed, I'm pretty direct. So if there's anything that I pinpointed that uh, made you feel uncomfortable, um, Please understand that it was not my intention. I, I just don't want you to waste many years of your life pining for someone um, and destroying your soul at the same time. There's other ways you can handle this situation, and I hope that you'll be able to move forward. And I hope you guys as well will take something from this. Um, the, the twin flame saga from hell would not be a twin flame relationship because a twin flame relationship feels peaceful and it feels relaxing and it's it, it's not challenging it's not there's no abuse and there's no um 
preoccupation with each other and things like that. There's growth and healing and, and it's, it's, it's definitely challenging in the sense that there's growth, but it's never, a f if you ever feel like it's from hell, then it's a relationship that might be karmic or that could turn that way because only the devil will send you a relationship from hell. The devil will never send you a twin flame. Mm -mm. Twin flame is very spiritual and very rare. All right, you all. Thanks for listening. I hope that you enjoy this podcast, this Love Talk podcast with me. I'm back every Wednesday. If you have a story you want to send in, uh, something similar, how you want to get some clarity on something, it's not a tarot reading, um, but it is intuitive clarity. If you have anything you would like to share, feel free to send me an email. The link uh, to my email, email will be below this video as well. And um, yeah, let's talk. Love you guys. I will talk to you soon. Take care.